Hey guys, it's uh, John from Half-Ass Gaming with a, a, a new game up on the screen here. Um, so I did have some issues. I actually made a video for the Roads to Gettysburg uh, campaign videos. Uh, number 39 was completely without no sound and I can't fix it. So the first time I made this video, again, with no sound and it was a, just, I just had to click something. Uh, unselect something that was selected and now we're back in business so what's going on here is I've had this game war for the Union it's an alternative in case you want to give something a strategic ACW game that is not Simonich is the Civil War uh, if you want to give something else a shot and and I thought I'd give this a shot because uh, I, I find it to be a, a very attractive looking game. Let's zoom out a little bit. So this is Northern Virginia right here, obviously Washington DC. And this is the start of the campaign and the cam uh, the full campaign starts in July of 1861. So let's move out a little bit and just give you a, a look at the map. Uh, Yes, and, and from what I read, some people aren't big on the Appalachian Mountains, how they did that, but it, it, it looks pretty cool to me, even though it's the honeycombing thing is, uh, I don't know, not the greatest thing, but the rest of the map, I'm, I'm digging, I, I really like it, and you know, I'm taking you down Alabama way, Louisiana, you move up, uh, there's, there's really... You can't really, it's hard to tell, let me just say that, it's hard to tell between the states unless you're well versed on your geography. Uh, you got the blue here, Illinois up here, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky in the middle, and then Missouri off to the left here. So moving over here, uh, there's the Mississippi, and that the Mississippi doesn't even really stand out from from the other ones. I mean, you got uh, St. Louis down here, Memphis, and you would think that the Mississippi would really be this ginormous river, but I mean, it kind of is, but it kind of isn't. But anyway, so that on the left end of the map, Arkansas, um, uh, Missouri again, and we make our back way, uh, our way, Pittsburgh up here, the honeycombs of the Appalachians, uh, Atlanta's over here, so somewhat in the mountains or just below them. And, and there, and there you have it. And we're back to Virginia, Baltimore, Washington, DC, etc. And I'll go ahead and expand on that and bring the armies back here. So, like I said, this is July of 61. Um, Here's my problem. Here's my problem. I bet some of you guys have this issue uh, as well. Probably not as bad as I have it. So when you're le uh, leading your busy life, you got the kids, at least one job. Some of us have two or three jobs, whatever. We don't have that much time to enjoy our hobby, okay? I get it. I get it. The wife's screaming at you. The kids are up your ass wanting to do stuff. And you got at least one job. I, I totally get that. So when let's say you find yourself with like a two-hour block of gaming time, you know, the wife and kids are gone it's a saturday whatever you, you got your, you got a two hour block and you want to sit down and do some gaming and just relieve stress and i get that so here's the question do you want to sit down with a game that you know very well and just sit there and enjoy it maybe get on vassal enjoy a little uh, game with something you're well versed in sure that that's awesome or if you're like me and you've got shelves full of games that you've never played and every day you walk in your game room and you see the shelves of gaming and you're just like you know when am i going to play this and 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 here's the thing a lot of guys when you're learning a new game they love it they get immersed in the game and they just they just fall in love with the game and digging through the minutia of the rules and, and it's just to them that's a blast okay I'm not like that because I'm not the brightest bulb to begin with. And when I'm learning a game and it's just like, oh, man, this sucks learning a new game. I just want to play something, you know. So that's how it was with this game. And and um, I really want to learn it. I it's it's it looks very appealing to me. I, I and you get that feeling like, you know, there's a good game there, but you it's like investing the time to learn enough to be able to play is just 
painful. To me, it's painful. Other dudes just love it, but I, it's painful to me learning new games. And I'm lazy as hell when it comes to learning new games. Um, maybe some of you are as well, but anyways, I decided to do it. Well, a lot of this has to do with the time off that I've got because of the virus. I decided I'm going to learn this game. So... I've, I, the other day I was playing a first turn or the, the parts of the first turn and I was like, okay, I'm just going to power through it. It's not difficult, by the way. So so if I'm given the impression that it's difficult, it's not. I'm just lazy. Okay, that's what it is. So so anyways, so I thought, I, I you know, I'm going to power through this game. I'm going to make it happen, blah, blah, blah. I mean, and, and uh, hopefully, oh, by the way, as I'm doing part of this first turn, I'm actively seeking your um, constructive criticism. If someone's well-versed in this game and I did something incorrect, by all means, get in here and let me know because otherwise I, I won't know because some of the instructions are vague you know or there's some things that are just not sinking into my head and uh but like i said if you see something and you know for a fact that i'm doing it incorrectly leave a comment man i i appreciate it just don't be a dick about it and everything will be uh totally appreciated so having said all that let's try to play uh, July 1861. I may only get a turn of this, and I'm damn sure not going to uh, play the whole thing. So I'm going to get over to the 1861 scenario, which is the campaign game, and I'm going to I'm going to try to get through some of this. And uh, you know, I'm just talk, talk, talking instead of playing. And let me find it. I got to try to find it. The Bull Run Appomattox starts on page 10 of the scenario booklet. So what's going on? Some of the special rules from 1861, uh, which is where we are. Uh, units may not entrench or use sea movement. Units can use rail or river movement, but only if they do so. If they do so, they may not attack. Okay, leaders that use river or rail movement may not command troops for attacks. No inner theater rail movement. Neither player can initiate fort or battery construction. The more the merrier, because I just want to do something very basic right here. So let's go to, let's pull out the actual rule book and go through the sequence of play. So, I mean, I've highlighted this whole damn thing. Um... Later, I'll regret that I did it if I ever try to sell the game. But anyway, here's a sequence of play. Sequence of play is basically uh, a joint monthly interface, a union player turn, Confederate player turn, and the, their joint troop withdrawal interface. Okay. So the monthly interphase, uh, it, it starts at the phase occurs on April turns only. Okay, bang, we don't need that. Kentucky entry phase starting October 1861. No, July 1861. Confederate supply capacity phase. So this is where you have, which is common in these strategic games, that you have to take a snapshot of the Confederate economy. And based on that, that's going to let you know how many reinforcements or whatever, whatever kind of goodies that the rebels are going to get. OK, uh, this phase occurs January, April, July, October. But I think all this is baked into the opening scenario. So I'm not even going to do it. Mutual replacement phase. Again, I think it's baked in. Uh, Confederate recruitment phase, January, April, July. I think it's already done. Mutual reinforcements, blah, 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 blah. It's already done. Leader phase. I think all that is basically done. Conf again, Confederate resource. So I think all of this stuff is already baked into the starting July 1861 thing there. And then so we move on to the Union player turn. All right, like I said, I tried to do this the other night. I recorded it, but I had problems, sound issues. If anyone who's watching Roads to Gettysburg knows that uh, video number 39 has no sound. And what happened is I bought myself a video camera for the computer and it turned off all the sound for all my subsequent videos. But I, I, I believe I fixed that. So anyways, let's just do this. The union player turn, right? Okay, let's make it happen. And uh, all right. 
So we got a supply phase. I went through here. I think all the union guys are in supply. Supply basically means that you're four overland hexes to a either a river or a rail line, and it gets you back to like a Union City or whatever. All these guys are basically in supply. Uh, movement phase. So I. I did this once, and I'm only going to do like three movements, okay? And the first movement is going to start in the middle of the country right here um, on the Mississippi River. We're going to do a little naval transport. And again, I could totally be screwing this up. So anybody knows the, it's got the definitive word on this. By all means, get in here. Let me know if I'm doing it. But the, right now, I have to find naval movement transport in the um and where it is river movement river movement of land by land units so that's going to be on page 32 10.4 uh so you need a transport and that's what we have right outside st louis right here uh the sky right here i'm going to actually go up one yeah, there we go the, this transports outside st louis and he i want him to take these two guys him and him a militia and a regular and we're going to take them down to cairo illinois or cairo cairo whatever the hell it is and so basically to embark it takes you have 30 points for the transport Okay, and it takes, and he can only take two SPs, by the way. Somewhere in here it says that. Uh, yeah, okay, two SPs, and basically it takes three points out of those 30 to embark these guys, or five if it's not a port or a city. So this is three points, and then every hex side of, of a hex is going to be like one. So... That's three right there to embark those guys. Maybe it's six. It's three points for each embark. Okay, so it's six points. He's at six right now. Um, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then we have a debark. Uh, debark, and that is so I was at like eighteen. Um, yeah, yeah. So he's got 12 and it's either three or five. So so these guys are totally good. So we're going to consider these guys debarked right here. They're in Cairo. OK, so that's that's the movement right there. So it's a naval transport movement, not on the sea. There's no sea movement for the Union in this turn, but there is river. So those guys are dropped off down in Cairo. Cairo, whatever the hell. So, anyways, we move back east here, and the Union's going to continue their movement right here. So, this is what I'm going to do. So, what I'm going to do right here now, again, when I when I'm saying this, I'm I'm making it sound like I have the definitive word. I'm well versed in this game. Not true. I'm doing what I think. I'm reading, and if somebody you know gets in here and says, "Hey, John, you're screwing up," all right, totally, I welcome that. All right. Um. Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, McDowell. McDowell. Uh, McDowell is going to move. Notice he has a six right there. That's the, the amount of uh, units he can control. One is like his battle rating. Six is his movement. So he's going to take he's going to take this four right here. Is there a four? Yeah. This guy right here. And he's going to clone him. And he's going to make this guy a uh, just follow along. Decrease. He's going to decrease him down to one. Decrease him down to one. And make this guy uh, decrease him down to three. So this four basically is leaving a, a one here. And he's taking three with McDowell. Okay. So he left one guy here. I'm going to take the move marker off of him uh, right there. And McDowell, I think. These two guys are going to move out of Washington, D.C., and they, they get to go three, which is the movement of the unit. Uh, the three, if you look at this guy right here, three is like his power uh, uh, combat strength, and three is his movement. So he, McDowell gets to move him the movement of the unit, and then he can continue on with movement and once he drops him off. They're going to go up one, uh, two. And then to go into rough terrain is three. So he's they get to go three. So they made it over to, uh, where is this area right here? This is, it's just hex 5804. All right, 
Cool. Now, if McDowell wanted to move back, he could do that and go grab somebody else or, or whatever. But no, he's going to hold that line right there. And, um, and, and, and that's what we're going to do right there. And then I'm going to make another move right here. I'm going to take one of these guys from Philadelphia. I'm going to clone him. Um, uh, a, uh, decrease, put one back on Philly. And then one of, and hold on, he's not moving. Uh, Mark, move. And then one of them actually is going to move, but he's using rail movement, which is, I believe it's, I don't know exactly what the thing is. Rail, uh, well, I guess I could go find it, try to find rail movement. If I can find it quickly, uh, it might take one to embark on the rail line. Not sure of that. And then a union unit can go uh, an unlimited amount of hexes. And you know the deal. You can't have a, or, or, wait a minute, rail? No, that's rail, rail movement and rail control. Okay, so it says uh, the game, uh, all right, union player, uh, unit, exp okay, a, uh, at 9.55, page 28, a union unit expends one MP to entrain, and then he can go uh, an unlimited distance, all right? And then another one MP to, to D train. So he's going to, this guy, wait a minute. He has to, he has to decrease. Yeah, he has to decrease because there were two. Just one of them's moving. Okay, he's going to go down the rail line. One, two, three, four, five. And Baltimore, and then he goes into uh, Washington for six. So that leaves uh, a total of five strength points in Washington, D.C. That's it for the union movement. We move the total of three units and one leader, uh, one down to Mississippi, one from Philly on rail movement to Washington. And then overland, we did McDowell and uh, three SPs over to uh, 5804. Now, let's see what it says right here. We have uh, union player turn, supply, we already did that. Uh, for, uh, by the way, the movement phase is fort and battery construction of which there's none of that in the first turn. When uh, Then we had operations where all this movement takes place. Uh, depot placement segment, we're not doing that. Now we move on to combat phase. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll out this one combat. Um, we're going to have one combat, and I'm going to wrap up this video, and that's going to be the union turn. Okay, uh, because this is, I haven't mastered this combat thing. Uh, I'm going to see if I can go over it with you guys real quick, because I had my first real big question or problem with this it just was not clear to me so i think i finally got it correct uh concerning uh, drm's die roll modifiers okay so let's do this so what we're going to do is McDowell, mcdowell's going to attack johnston all right right here and the first thing that we're going to look at is in terrain so they're attacking into a rough hex, which is not a problem. The problem is they got a small river there, and that makes the Union force only three quarters of what it is. So three quarters of six, so their power is six, two threes, um, it's going to be four and a half. 4.5 is their power. And they're facing off against a two. Uh, Johnston is a two right there. Okay, so it's, it's two to one is what it is. Okay, two to one, and so we factored in terrain. So when you go into DRMs, um, terrain is uh, so it's basically three quarters with with the water. Okay, and then the other two are there's no fatigue issue here. Uh, the only other issues are morale and leadership so what happens here is when when you look at leadership the rebels are a plus one because boat no not Beauregard Johnson's a two the middle number McDowell's a one so the rebels are plus one and then the other thing is morale this is a, we got to go into morale so there is a chart let me pull the chart out if you look at one of these little mini charts right here 
it says morale raider. So the, what are the majority of the units? What are they? So with a, the, the union, it's militia. Militia on an attacker is a zero. Okay, now what are the rebels primarily? What are they? Well, they're both the both of them. They're they're volunteers. So on defender, they're a plus one. So the rebels at volunteer plus one, and the union at militia zero. The rebels are going to get another plus one on this a DRM. Now here's here's where I had the big problem. First time playing this game, I wanted to resolve this combat. Now it was like okay, so there's two two uh, two roles. Okay, rebels, rebels and the union roll. I'm about to roll. So, how does the modifier apply? Now, apparently, this is the biggest problem I had. Apparently, the plus one the rebels have for leader and the plus one that they have for morale are applied to the union's die roll only. Okay, now if I'm incorrect with that, I need to be corrected because this is very important. So I'm going to go ahead and bust out a roll, and here it is. Okay, the union rolls an eight. They roll an eight, and the rebels roll, they both roll eights. Okay, now, so we have a negative, a neg well, if it's a plus one for the rebels, it's actually a negative one for the union. So that's going to take them down to six. Okay, they both rolled eights, but the two, the two, the rebels plus ones are actually applied as negative ones to the union roll. Now, like I said, if I got that wrong, you guys get in here and cite the rule that proves me wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, look at the chart again and see what we have. So um, the union are actually attackers. Attacker on the left. Um, where does it say attackers on the left? Because I'm looking in this right here, two to one odds, attacker. Is anywhere does it say the attacker is the left number? That's that's what's bugging me out. Why don't they make that easy? Because you have this chart, land combat results table, and you have like, you know, you have a result with a forward slash and then the second result. I'm going to assume that the num the letter to the left of the forward slash is um, the attacker. Yep. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. So anyways, so when you have a six on a two to one, and that's a, uh, a natural six. You could have a leader casually, but we don't. A six on a two to one is going to be an M for the union. What does the M mean? We'll get back to that. And then a six, and then a six is an MR for the defender. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I'm doing this right. MR for the defender, which is an M with a possible retreat. So let's look at the attacker's value right here. So if he's got an M, and then you go to the combat losses matrix, and that is based on the amount of the defenders in the hex. So they're on the one to three, and they have an M. So it's two asterisks. Now we're doing, we're doing the union first. It's a it's an M plus one FP and two asterisks. Roll again. Lose one SP if die roll is one to seven. So let's roll the union again. See what this will tell us if they get a loss. They get a two, and uh, for two asterisks, um, lose one SP if die roll is one to seven, which it is. So Union's going to lose one. One of these guys is going to go down to two. Decrease. All right. And what else is the deal? Uh, one fatigue point. One, one fatigue. Um, plus one. Also one fatigue. All right. Well, let's give somebody a fatigue on here. I guess both of them get this. Uh, can I just add a, add a fatigue? 
yeah, I guess all units that took part in the attack get a fatigue. I'm going to assume that. So they both get fatigues. Okay, now to the Union. The Union, I mean, the, now to the Rebels. They got an M slash R, which was a... S Actually, they rolled an 8. Hold on a second. The 6... The 6 for the Union... Right, they got an M, and then the Rebels got an 8, which is the same thing, an M slash R. 6, 7, and 8, and 9 are all the same thing. M to the R. So the M is, they're going to have to roll and see what they got. Here comes the Rebel roll to see how many losses they got. They got a 0, which is a 10. Um... So they have no losses. It wasn't one to seven. They got a 10. No SP losses. And and then they have an R, which is a retreat. Let me see what that is. Oh, they have to they have to roll again. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Um roll again. Lose one SP. Yeah. The rebels are going to take a they're they're going to take a fatigue hit as well. This one unit increased fatigue. Did he not increase his fatigue? No, wait a minute. Back increases fatigue. There it is. All right, so everybody's increased their fatigue now. As far as the unit, they roll the so they don't lose a guy because they would have to roll a one to seven. Um. They get a zero, but they have this R result. And what does that mean? I, I know it's some sort of retreat, but let me try to find it where it is on one of these charts. R. I found it the other night. Okay, an R result on the land CRT causes a plus one fatigue in addition to any gain for an M or an H. Okay, so the rebels are going to take another fatigue. Uh, increase fatigue so they go to two but what about a retreat so the standard retreat is I think one hex um, I'm pretty damn sure about that I looked that up the other day so the standard retreat is one hex so the rebels are going to retreat to I believe they're going to go to uh, Front Royal they get out of Winchester um let me look about advance after combat let me look advance after combat see if the union can get in there because that's absolutely what they want to do um i have to find retreat and advance after combat there it is uh advances on page 44 retreat uh loss leader casualties blah 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 Okay, when a troop unit suffers an R result, their owner re immediately retreats on one hex. Okay, troop units stacked together must retreat to the same hex, blah, 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 blah. They do incur a one fatigue for the retreat. And now let's go to advance after combat. If all the defending units are eliminated or forced to retreat, the, unit, the attacker may advance, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Okay, all infantry units, militia, cavalry, blah, 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 units can advance after combat. Only if the leader who commanded them in the attack also advances. Okay, all right, fair enough. So, uh, McDowell is going to take these, uh, him and his army are going to move into Winchester. And as you see, this takes two points from the rebels uh supply capacity or whatever it is because they started with uh, this 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 vassal module does a good job i know you guys can't see this at home but it does a good job of saying what the uh rebels start with um i'm trying to figure out which one of these yeah it has a really nice uh, uh calculates what they started with as far as uh, the 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 rubble start with 122 supply capacity, 107 in the east, 15 in the west, and now they just lost two for losing Winchester. Okay, the the Union just captured Winchester, and and now they're going to have 
113. Okay, so the Union is, is they're gonna, after they after they advance after combat into Winchester because Winchester's a two. So they go there and now the Union, the rebels now have uh, they've been reduced from 115 to 113. Um, that's all they're going to do. And I'm going to go back to a sequence of play. And now, so this would be the end of the Union player declares and resolves his land attacks. Oh, by the way, one little small thing I got to throw in here. Before there's a combat right there, the, that combat that I just did, if you've got the, some of the defenders of cavalry units, they have the option of uh, bugging out. Okay, but that did, that's NA right here. Okay, so combat phase, um, that, that's it for the Union. Uh, and then I'm just going to actually call this right here. This video is 30 damn minutes already. And then we have, I guess there's an administration, uh, phase. Um, the administration phase consists of five segments because the union's done with tacking. Rail repair segment. The segment occurs every turn. Union player may can repair or convert one rail hex in each theater. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm going to skip that for now. I'm going to skip that because I'm not well versed on that. And I don't know if they move any, if there's any rail hexes they can move down. Um, McDowell went up, he, I guess he went up one hex and I'm not sure if he could move it up to Winchester. Supply judgment phase. So the segment occurs every turn. Union player may remove one. That doesn't apply here. Battery unsuppressed segment. The segment occurs every. No, we're not even dealing with that. Naval, uh, yeah, fatigue recovery segment occurs every turn. The fatigue units of any Union troops that neither attacked are reduced by one. Okay, so McG McDowell's guys are the only ones that have fatigue. They attack, so they're not eligible to take fatigue off. Um, I'm going to highlight that, actually, because when you start playing a game, you find things that you fail to highlight. That's pretty important. I'm going to go ahead. Segment occurs, blah, 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 blah. The any union unit troops that neither attacked nor force marched in a player turn are reduced by one. Okay, I like that. Now, so the only thing that I'm not doing here is this seg the rail repair segment. This segment occurs every turn. The union player may repair or convert one rail hex in each theater. Now, obviously, obviously, um, they just took over Winchester, and I'm wondering if they can uh, get their rail all the way up to uh, Winchester. Um, and this is, and also this is the first hex in, the first hex in Virginia. They saw when they won this battle and advanced after combat, they officially moved into Virginia. So it's probably a rail repair segment. It's probably going to take a little bit of reading to understand this, but let's see if I can just knock it out real quick. Because I think we want to move our rail into Winchester, which is in Virginia. I, I don't know if I can do it, and I don't want to say I can do it if I, if I can't. Um, uh, what is it called? Rail control? Rail line control? Rail line uh, establishing control? Uh, let's just take a look at it. Page 28 real quick. Rail movement is a type of strategic movement, blah, 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 blah. The instructions in each scenario specify which rail lines, blah, 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 blah. I got that. A rail hex, which a player does not control at the start of the scenario, becomes friendly only if the player repairs it according to the procedures outlined. Okay. Uh, yeah. You know what? I'm gonna have to do this offline. And what's gonna happen is before I get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into this rail thing because I want to see if he can move his rail all the way up to Winchester, which is kind of like a little bit of a hub there. Um, I'm gonna have this resolve before I do the next video. Um, rail repair procedure restrictions, and what is this actually called on the uh, sequence of play? It is called the uh, rail repair segment. 
So if I go back to this rail repair segment. So the deal with this is that as the Union troops move south, they want to move their railheads and they want to uh, uh, repair them or whatever the hell the deal is. OK, I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to read. This is the very next thing I read. So I'm going to cut this video at 35 minutes. I'm going to deal with this rail issue to see if we can move the rail repair into Winchester uh, or just generally see what the deal is. But anyways. I'm fighting through this. This is not easy for me. Any goddamn new game that I try to do is just, it's its not easy, man. It's a chore, okay? I mean, it's well worth it because it's another game I, I get to enjoy and play, but it is not easy for me. I, I marvel at these guys who can just take a game off a shelf, like just jot through the rules and bam, they're, they're playing it like professional like pros in in like a half hour and, and it's just not me i'm the opposite end of the spectrum all right i'm gonna go ahead and upload this hopefully maybe your your interest gets peaked with this game because it looks good the rules look pretty pretty good just because i'm slow doesn't mean you guys are but i'm john i'm out half-ass gaming i'm glad i got my sound fixed anyway i'm out take care bye-bye